Welcome everybody. I'm going to talk about product photography and this is uh, the first uh, class in the product photography workshop. We're going to talk just a little bit about what product photography is before we get going. Product photography is the art and skill of making something mundane look great. It's not easy to do. It's one of those areas in photography that everybody thinks is uh, so simple. It's not simple at all. Um, it is detailed work, it is fine adjustments, uh, and it's something that you have to visualize before you get into it. I teach subject-centric light. We're gonna to touch a little bit on that as we do this here. Subject-centric light is understanding that everything reflects and everything reflects differently. And so we don't think lighting into the product, we think what the product produces back to us. So this first shot here is by Charles Howard, my good friend down in, in uh, Houston. And Charles's photograph of the Old Spice is kind of cool. It looks like it's sitting on pure white here. This is uh, uh, often a background for lots of product photography. Remember, your art director wants to put some text over here and a headline over here. Uh, and make the uh, bottle look really great. You'll notice that Charles came down a little bit on the bottle. You can see the curve at the top. Uh, we can see that curve. If we're coming straight at the bottle, we wouldn't see that. So he's using a probably a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame 35, so what's called a normal lens, um, and coming right in at the middle. So we get a little bit of curve at the bottom and a little bit of curve at the top. Remember, these bottles were designed by, de by product designers who take as much pride in the design of their products than we, as we do in the photographs we make of them. So our goal is to show off the design of this product. All Old Spice has to sell is this bottle. You know, we can't try the shampoo out in the store. We can't pick it up like an iPhone case and look at it, et cetera. So we gotta, gotta remember the brand by the bottle. It's part of their brand. So look at the bottle. We've got this little cap at the top, got this little indentation. Notice that little indentation. Then this little decorative thing here, right? And then it comes down and has that little bump out here. And then these three lines are three or two lines across the bottom, little things that stick out. This is a highly designed product. We've got to show that. So Charles is using a light on both sides coming in, he's also got a little bit of, of nothingness running down the back because if we kept this highlight going all the way to the edge here, this highlight all the way to the edge, you see how the bottle would blend right into the background? It'd be a very bright uh, highlight right next to that very bright background. So he chose to use two lights on the side, uh, a, a light uh, behind the, the, uh, the, the diffusion material here. So you can see his soft boxes, by the way, are turned away from the scrim. The scrim is perpendicular to the camera lens and the product, but the soft boxes are turned away. So this part of the soft box is farther away than that part of the scrim. This is very close to the scrim. You know what that means? This is brighter than that on the scrim, which is what the bottle sees. The bottle does not see the softbox, it sees the scrim. And the bottle then reflects back to us what that scrim looks like. So that scrim is brighter and then softer. So blending right across the front, brighter and then softer. And that, uh, that very large light source, the large scrim here, compared to the size of the bottle, gives a soft light and then Charles is manipulating that soft light, soft light to have a gradient. And now you know why I like scrims more than just soft boxes. They give you more elements of control for your lighting. And when you're shooting something as mundane as a bottle of shampoo that costs $2, you've got to pull out as many tricks as you can. Mike Thompson has this uh, very lovely bottle. It's not a very large bottle, very lovely bottle. It's got the gold and, that's, and everything. And he wanted to try uh, something that's quite popular, especially with wine photographers, and that is to break the two uh, reflections into a little bit different uh, style. So we've got a very hard edge on this side and a very soft edge on this side. 
And we do that by con controlling. Oh, let's just look at what else is beautiful about it. Notice we've got that nice highlight at the top of the bottle. The, the cap looks great. The gold looks great all the way through here. Got a nice, lovely reflection here at the bottom. Just the same as we did, by the way, with, uh, with Charles. This is created in Photoshop. You've got the white. You just stretch out the white background and you take the bottom of the bottle, flip it over in Photoshop, and just kind of drop it in, change the, uh, the uh, structure of it, the uh, opacity. Same thing that Mike is doing here, just changing the opacity and making the black thing because Mike shot his also on a uh, baby plate, which is a, a little plate that goes on top of a stand. You can put things on it and camera mounts and different things. You can see it here. Added the foreground in black in uh, Photoshop, which is not something that we don't do. So we got to notice that in the behind the scenes shot, you see the, the scrim here and you see the light is turned perpendicular to the scrim. So he's getting a very bright light right here, but then it's softly breaking as it gets down to the end. And the end is a hard, sharp edge. All of this that we see out here is not reflected back in the bottle. He's shooting at 5.6 at 125th of a second. Um, in a, in a dark garage, if, if this isn't lit over here, it's not going to reflect because that's what this black area is. It's a reflection of what the bottle sees, and the bottle's not seeing anything. There's just nothing there. Uh, but you can see how bright that is right there, and then it stretches to the very abrupt end. On this side, it's a white card. And that white card is... Is, so, is much larger than the scrim. You can see how far it stretches all the way around the bottle. And the light from the, the scrim is what is lighting up this white card. So the scrim light is brighter here, and it just gets softer as it moves out this white card. The card is pulled away from the bottle a little bit. So the farther out it gets, the less of focus that it has. Because you, you have to remember that your depth of field is the distance from the lens to the shiny object, from the shiny object to the end of the white card. You need that much depth of field, and 5.6 isn't going to pull it off. It pulled it off for this edge, but it's not going to pull it off for that edge. So let's go back up and look, and you can see how it's working across that, that white card. So uh, one light, some careful work with the scrim and beautiful lighting on the product. Uh, typical product that we shoot, notice the design elements, right? Got these little beads and bubbles up here. We've got this hand grip over here. We've got this cap, which is kind of cool. We've got the different uh, type of, uh, of, of uh, texture running in here. We've got this rough texture on the edge and Paul Campbell down in, in Australia captured all of that. We can look at this and really get a good, strong feeling about what this thing feels like in our hands. What, what are we buying? The bottle looks cool. It's black on black. It's got some great lines to it. Uh, the little guy right next to so notice how the, the, the uh, uh, logos are lit really very nicely. Got a little line here. Got a little highlight back here. Got a nice, strong highlight back here. Those highlights are helping sculpt the bottle. Uh, and how did he do it? Well, he's got a light back here striking this white board. That white board is giving us that highlight that runs right down there. That's the angle of incidence from here to here to the camera. Angle of incidence, angle of reflection. So we're seeing that. Then we've got the bigger board here that is being lit by this softbox over here, lighting through a scrim. This card is getting nice and bright. This shiny piece of, of uh, plastic is reflecting it. That's what our subjects do. It ref they reflect the light. This kind of surface reflects differently than that kind of surface, doesn't it? Yeah, so that tells us our brain knows that these surfaces feel different. 
We've got a white card in the back, which is being lit. You notice how it's tilted back, being lit by the top light. And that's giving us this light back here, right along here. And of course, we've got the big scrim with the softbox giving us our main light. Notice we've got a big white card coming right up to the camera. And that white card coming up to the camera is what you're seeing right there, reflected it from the, the black material of the plastic, which is somewhat shiny. The more dull it is, the less visible it is. You can only see the results of it. But when it's a, a, a semi-shiny plastic like this, we're actually going to see, we actually are seeing the light sources. Subject-centric light. Read up on it on my website. It'll help you understand how light works. Uh, a couple of uh, different versions of uh, Axe. Uh, and this is a, a nice way to work here. The uh, uh, shot on a black plexi. The black plexi gives us a, an absolute uh, reflection here. You can see the black plexi here. So why is this surface white? Well, the angle of the camera skimming along the surface here and a white card back here, or in this particular case, the white softbox was brought right behind the product back there between the product and the gray wall. And now that white softbox is reflecting in the shiny black surface coming forward. So what we're seeing is the softbox being reflected in the black plexi. But where the, bo the two bottles are, there's no light coming there to be reflected. So what we do is we pick up the bottles being reflected in the black plexi. Very nice and very popular way to work for backgrounds. What I, one of the things I like about this type of work, I mean, we've uh, removed the softbox here, now we're going back on the gray, uh, is that the photographer, in this particular case, Carla McMahon in South Africa, the, the photographer could drop a blue card there and then we'd have it against blue or we could take that out and we could put a piece of of uh, muslin that has uh, you know painted uh, blotches on it and we could take take the shot and we could drop that out we could put a a green one back there whatever we want we can put it back there and i know people say well let's just do it in photoshop believe me it's so much easier to put a, a green card back there and shoot it than it is to do it in photoshop um and you know you might as well be able to do it as best you can without Photoshop. Do as much as you can in camera, the best you can, uh, and save Photoshop for the heavy lifting that we can't do in camera. That's the way I look at it. So uh, you can see the lighting setup. We've got a big strip light here. We've got a, a, a head going through a scrim. We've got a black card here, and I'll show you what that's doing in a second. A black card here and a white card here. Let's go back up and look at it. Notice the the black card giving us a little bit of an edge to this. Look at this light coming from the left side scrim. There's always a top light, by the way. It's one of the things when I say well, you need a boom is because you need a boom. You, you, you start out with this top light. That's your, your basically your main light, even though when you turn the top light on, on a shot like this, it's not going to look very good because there's no light on the, on the, on the subject. But when you start adding white cards around it, all of a sudden this light, lighting up the white cards and then having your product reflect those white cards all around it, it's just really an amazing way to work. Uh, you, can use a, you can use another light if you want, or scrims, or, or just cards, or what have you. Uh, but it's a really amazing way to work. I, have, I get people sometimes ask me, uh, well, how do you shoot, a, how do you light a car? And my answer is always the same. You do not light a car. You light what the car reflects. Because cars reflect, shiny cars reflect everything that's around them. Light that, and then you'll get a beautiful car shot. John McAllister in the UK uh, found these uh, very shiny water bottles. Uh, and part of the design, of course, is the shininess. And part of the design is the 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 way it kind of just gets bigger at the bottom. This is all a product designer's work, hard work. Uh, and he used the reflection of the light source as a design element here, John did, to really add some, uh, some strength to it. Notice also that John got down low. He's below the product, below the product, shooting up into the product. 
uh, and the product is uh, in between a, a in between these two soft boxes with a white board across the top of the soft boxes giving the top light effect there's if you can see it up in in here there's a top light effect going on uh, but he also then uh, got down and shot up into it back here is an octobox behind tracing paper and what that does is it gives them a nice light green to darker green up here just controlling it where he's putting the octobox how big the octobox is how close the octobox is to the scrim coming back all of that changes the look it's something you just have to experiment with and we've all seen shots like this we've all seen shots like this this is a mainstay of commercial photography it's just product it's small uh, uh, car carrying sizes uh, armor all and uh, Mark Lunn in Cincinnati decided to uh, use this as his example and check out how nice he kept the labels all pretty nice and tightly the same through here with the tire foam armor all coming right up right in the, in the front you can see his lighting he's got the soft box and a white card and a white card and a soft box on both sides and you can see it everywhere um, probably need to uh, fix this label a little bit and this label over here just a little bit they're a little bit bright but you know for uh, uh, for all intents and purposes this this will work pretty good for for most things and uh, Mark did have some bracketed shots that that he fixed this up with so you can definitely definitely do some serious work with very simple lighting in this particular case two scrims two soft boxes the scrims are slightly uh, the boxes are slightly angled from the scrims so he could play with the light and then there's the two fill cards that we see in this area that's a fill card that's a scrim uh, very shiny bright black plastic cap reflects everything so that's what there's where we are and um, a little uh, overview of some work that uh, some of our photographers have done in the past and we got uh, Mark and we've got John McAllister and we've got Carla McMahon and Paul Campbell and Mike Thompson and Charles Howard so product photography of bottles so that's what we're working on and please as I said in the uh, instructions on this on the uh, on the page please don't do glass bottles please don't do anything shiny even though I showed you Mark or uh, John McAllister's very shiny bottles uh, if you can help from doing that I would appreciate it I really would like to have uh, some sort of opaque plastic uh, not super glossy product but that being said you know if you got something glossy and that's what you're going to shoot then that's fine all right thanks everybody see you on the call